Hello friends, this video on heredity and evolution part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we got some idea on the evidences of evolution. The how do we know that evolution actually existed long back? So now let us try to look at evolution by stages. Let us see what were the different evolutions which actually took place or which actually brought about a huge change. So let us look at evolution by stages. So in this way, we'll talk about evolution by eyes. We'll talk about evolution of feathers and we will talk about artificial selection. So these are some of the evolution which actually brought about a huge change in the organisms. So let us first talk about the evolution of eyes. Now long back in, in very primitive organisms, there was no distinct uh, structure called as eye for vision, like how we have it now, right? So it was not there. But then in due course of time, in one of those primitive organisms like Euglena, it was seen that they also had some eye spot kind of a structure which was capable of detecting light. So here in this structure, you can see a red colored structure. So that was nothing but the eye spot. So this eye spot gave some survival advantage to these flatworms. So they were benefited. So since they were benefited, natural selection came into play. So anything that is good for an organism, nature also supports it. So this eye spot was something which gradually with time started developing. So in these kind of organisms like Euglena, this small eye spot was there, but it was seen hidden. It was like in a hidden form. It was not that visible or it was not that distinct, right? But gradually with due course of time in flatworms like planaria, we could see that the eye spots became little more visible. Right? So here we can actually see or actually locate the eye spots. Then gradually even more developed eyes came into being. So the most developed eyes of human beings. So now we have such a complex eye structure, right? Which has got a lens, which has got the retina and everything is in place. So we can view objects which are far, which can, we can view objects which are near. So it's like awesome, right? So how did this evolution take place? Did this happen overnight? No. Even for this, it took a lot of time. So this was a gradual process. This was a continuous process. And over a period of time, the structure called eye came into picture. Right? So all vertebrates or mammals have a similar basic structure of eye, like how human beings have. So most of them have a similar kind of structure for eye with small differences here and there. So this was how the evolution of eyes take place. Let us talk about feathers. Feathers was something which was evolved in the period of the dinosaurs. So just imagine, I'm talking about such a long, long time ago. So that time, the dinosaurs were feathered only for the purpose of insulation. So for locomotion, it was not at all used. When it was too cold, then the feathers provided them warmth and that was the purpose of the feathers. But later, the same feathers adopt, got adopted by the birds and they actually helped them in flight. So evolution everywhere takes place in the same way, it follows the same basic mechanisms of evolution. Mutation, migration, natural selection and genetic drift. These four things together actually causes evolution. So because of all such changes gradually and over a continuous period of time, you see new organisms arising from some old existing different organisms, right? So here also if you see the dinosaurs and the birds, they are so very dissimilar. So we can't even think of the fact that the birds also have evolved from some form of dinosaur. Even that is so unbelievable. But if you look at it, that is actually, actually true. Right? So if you look at this feathered dinosaur, you can see that yeah, it has got some similarity with the bird. So this is how the evolution of feathers also took place. Let us now talk about something called artificial selection. We already spoke about natural selection, right? So what was natural selection? It was something, a change or an evolution which was supported by nature. Something which gave survival advantage to an organism was supported by nature. So that was natural selection. Now when I talk of artificial selection, that means it is something 
which is selected artificially artificially by human beings right so man selects the desirable traits so man is going to decide which trait should survive and which trait should not survive so let us take some examples so what is artificial selection it is a process of selecting desired traits to breed other plants or animals to get desirable traits like the one of the most beautiful example would be the example of dogs from grey wolves it was man who was the breeder in that case so he selected desirable traits in a uh, wolf and then make them mate each other and lead to the formation of dogs right so it was completely guided and controlled by man they selected the characters they wanted whichever character suited them they chose those characters right so this is known as artificial selection so it is not only true in case of animals it is also very popular in case of plants so if you look at it this is wild cabbage so this is what actually existed in nature once upon a time so what did man do he took some of the desirable traits from this plants and started doing mix and match combination and finally he could come up with so many varieties of vegetables from the same plant so he could plant so many different plants so cauliflower broccoli uh, cabbage red cabbage so they all look so very different but they all have been derived from the same plant just by artificial selection so artificial selection is nothing but choosing the desired traits and then cross breeding them with each other giving rise to some new varieties which are considered to be better for human beings so human beings did artificial selection only for their own benefits all right so let us now look at the difference between artificial selection and natural selection artificial selection is a process which is conducted by man natural selection is a natural phenomenon artificial selection here traits are selected by man which are beneficial to them obviously human beings are selfish as you know so whatever is beneficial to them they will select only those traits traits selected are beneficial to the species but in case of natural selection nature will select those traits which will which are actually beneficial for that species for example in the case of those green beetles so if the beetles were green in color it was beneficial to the beetles because they were not being eaten by the crow so nature supported the green color and more and more green beetles were formed right so nature will always think something which is beneficial to that species in artificial selection less time is needed to yield results in natural selection long time is needed for the results because natural selection is something which will happen on its own so it will take its own time for example the green beetles also the population of the green beetles did not increase one all of a sudden it took its own time the beetles reproduced more beetles were formed and gradually their numbers increased but in case of artificial selection since it is under the control of man they just cross breed things and things come up very quick and fast so the production or the results are obtained in case of artificial selection is really fast so this was all about evolution by stages so when we look at the examples of artificial selection it is this example of obtaining different types of plants from a same plant when i talk of natural selection the green beetles and the red beetles are the best examples thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again